Today is May 3. On the 3rd of May 1715, a total solar eclipse was visible across Northern Europe and Northern Asia. This event had been closely predicted by astronomer, mathematicians and physicist Edmund Halley. To within how many minutes accuracy had Edmund Halley predicted this total solar eclipse? Welcome to a new episode of Smarter by the Second, and today I'm once again joined by Michael. Welcome back, Michael. Thank you. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, just uh, feeling the like a victor already beating uh, about. <laughs> yes, yes. I uh, I have nothing left to live for uh, <laughs> for in this uh, <laughs> 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 uh, game Call show. Someone, uh, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So last week you participated uh, with your first four rounds and uh, you made it out with actually two perfect rounds, which uh, I think one you thought you uh, did perfect in, but the other you used two lifelines and you hoped you would manage, but actually you got perfect. Yeah, I... Uh, so what is your, your tactic going to be this episode? Did you adjust it? Um, well, I don't have that many lifelines left. Yes, true, you have two of them. And I need seven correct yes. for uh, for each round, so uh, I'm just hoping I get good <laughs> <laughs> good questions. It's uh, it's a hit or miss. You either, or at least that's how I feel about it. I know all of it, or mm. I uh, struggle along. <laughs> yeah, you're really like an expert in some uh, cases, and the other things you're like, I never heard of this. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, who knows mushrooms? I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's see whether we start with mushrooms again. <laughs> Though Finland is a Nordic country, it is not considered to be a part of Scandinavia, which consists of Norway, Sweden and Denmark. In Finnish, Finland is called Suomi. It is not clear why in English it is called Finland. In one theory is that the name Finland comes from the Old English word Finna, a general term once used to describe people from Scandinavia. Here are the nine fins and legs of sea animals. Uh oh. <laughs> so you will see them and you have to tell from what animal this leg or fin is. So, the options you can choose from are polar bear, pufferfish, platypus, tuna, turtle, orca, otter, penguin, and seal. So now we have the animals. Yes. I think you'll manage? <laughs> I, think I'll, I think answers. I'll manage. All right, best of luck. Thank you. Turtle. Otter, pufferfish, uh, orca, polar bear, uh, seal, tuna, uh, platypus, penguin. Stop. It was not the most confident stop I have. No, I'm surprised, but I think I won't use any lifelines. Yeah, so you are allowed to switch two of them, but that's it if you don't use any lifelines. I'm confident. <laughs> all right, all right, then we can uh, go straight to checking. So the first one, first one, here we saw a turtle, but I think it's a tortoise. Yeah. Or like I was, if it's in the water, I think it's called differently. But it's correct. Then we have the otter, followed by the pufferfish, and then the orca, the polar bear, then we have the seal, and that's the tuna is your seventh correct answer. And then we have the platypus and the penguin. I think the number of correct answers are not shown. But you have them all correctly. Nice. So congratulations, nice. you get a, a third lifeline as well. And uh, let's go straight to the next round. As Aristotle once said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. In this round, we will test your knowledge on some of the most famous philosophers throughout history and their literary contributions to the field of philosophy. Here are nine philosophers and their works. Okay. I will give you the name of the, the, the publication they have, and you have to tell me the corresponding philosopher. Okay. So the options you can choose from are René Descartes, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Kant, Marcus Aurelius, Sun Tzu, Aristotle, Niccolo Machiavelli, 
Friedrich Nietzsche and Plato. So philosophy, how are we standing on this subject? Um, I'm a bit knowledge in it, but um, I'm not sure if I will recognize all the works. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> all right, uh, let's just begin. First one, Republic. Plato. The Art of War. Sun Tzu. Beyond Good and Evil. Shit. Uh, Machiavelli. The Prince. Uh, Kant. Critique of Pure Reason. Reason. Critique of Pure Reason. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, Rousseau. Metaphysics. Oh, dit hoort hem niet. Um, De Descartes, for now. The Social Contract. Okay, that's Machiavelli, and the answer I had for that to Nietzsche. <laughs> Meditations. Uh, Marcus Aurelius. Discourse on Method. Aristotle. Yeah, okay, I'm just... If you want to use your free lifelines, and if you do not want to continue to the last ones... You can take your time, but if you want to, you I'm not going. Go <laughs> yes. All right, then uh, you stop. Stop the time. Okay, stop. I <laughs> three lifelines. Life <laughs> All right. So then you need to have four yourself. You think you got that? No. <laughs> With chance, maybe, oh. but uh, I really just I should read up on philosophy more. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> only the title would be would have been good enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not to actually uh, have to open the book. All right. So the first one. Oh, nee, ik... It's Republic, that is indeed written by Plato. So then we have The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Then Beyond Good and Evil, I think you first said Machiavelli and then you corrected it to Nietzsche, with his, with, and it is Nietzsche. Yes. Then we have The Prince, and this is actually by Niccolo Machiavelli. Mm. Then we have Critique of Pure Reason, and this is Kant. So these will yeah. both be used by the lifeline. You have Metaphysics, which is by Aristotle. Then we have the social contract by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Then meditations is by Marcus Aurelius. So congratulations, there's the yes. second correct answer. <laughs> and the last one is discourse on method by René Descartes. <sighs> so I think it's once again not showing, but we know you've got seven correct answers. Uh, yeah, once you said the, the, the names, I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah, it all comes back to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now <laughs> you can choose. You will get seven extra seconds you have 164 seconds and you have zero lifelines and you need to have two perfect rounds. I would like to stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I will congratulate you. And uh, we have the participation award with you. Oh, also won, but great. you even get the participation award. Yes, thank you. So six rounds, that's uh, quite impressive. Yes, thank you. I uh, I got lucky <laughs> a you bit. Lucky. But I, uh, uh, you used lifelines in situations where you didn't need to, so... Not that lucky. I that's think, true, I think you can be more proud of yourself than just saying uh, you were lucky. Yeah. All right, so uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I, yeah, uh, it was our pleasure. And then uh, we will move on to our next participant. And now I am joined by our next contestant, which is Quirijn. Welcome, Quirijn. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. How are you doing? Uh, good. Lovely weather today, so that's nice. Uh, good to hear. So could you shortly introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm uh, Quirijn. I'm 21 years old. Uh, I'm technically now a third year technical computer science, but I'm currently the Officer of Internal Affairs of Interactive. So I'm not really studying. And next to being bored, uh, I like to have a drink from time to time, and I'd love to follow Formula One. Ah, thank you. So you're actually already the third person participating from your current board. Do you feel any competition between you guys? I, well, I have to say there is maybe a slight competition. I mean, we've seen, we've all seen Wout do it, so <laughs> I, I hope I, I, I can improve on that score. <laughs> but yeah, we shall see. I think a lot of interactivers are going with that way of thinking. As long as I can beat Wout, <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, exactly. <laughs> poor guy. 
All right, so today you're playing for the category Geography. Why did you choose Geography? Uh, well, I always liked it in primary and high school as a subject, yeah. and I've played countless hours of GeoGuessr, ah. so I, I hope that helps me today. <laughs> well, I know uh, Niels Berg is also uh, a GeoGuessr yes. fan, and I think he got a perfect uh, score on the geography last season, so it might come in handy. Sounds promising, sounds promising. <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, test your knowledge. Let's start with the first round. Urk is a village in the Netherlands, which is the center of a lot of jokes. It is a close-knit community where religion plays a huge part. The main source of income throughout Urk's history has been fishing, which makes sense because it was an island. However, it is now a part of Flevoland and it is stripped from its status as an island. Here are nine places which still are islands. You will get a picture with the outline of the island and you have to recognize the shape and tell me what island it is. So the islands you can choose from are Crete, Sri Lanka, Tessel, Mallorca, Sicily, Madagascar, Cyprus, Haiti, and Taiwan. So if you're playing GeoGuessr, you're kind of looking at a map at the bottom uh, corner. Yes. But you think you'll manage? I hope so. All right, I mean, we're looking for five correct answers in this uh, first round. All right, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cyprus. Uh, Sri Lanka. Um, Sicily. Um, Taiwan. Uh, no, that is Taiwan. The previous one is then Haiti. Uh, no. This is Haiti, then the, the other one was Mallorca, where I just said that it was Haiti. Uh, I believe this is Tessel. This is Madagascar. And this is Crete. And then stop the time. Okay, do you want to use any life? I think you got five of them. Well, I was I started to really doubt everything. I mean, I know a few that are correct. Yeah, you can take your time if you want to count the, the number of answers you know for sure are correct. Yeah, I'm quickly thinking about it. I'm going to use one lifeline just one to be lifeline. sure. All right, so that also means 16 seconds will be subtracted. And then we can go to checking. So the first island we see here, this is Cyprus. Next up, we have Sri Lanka. Then here we have the ball that is kicked by the leg that is Italy. It's Sicily. Then we have Mallorca, which you got on your third try. Next up is Taiwan. So this is your fifth correct answer. Congratulations. Haiti. Then our very own Tessel. Madagascar. And lastly, we have Crete. So perfect round. So you get your lifeline back. Ah, yeah, great. Not your seconds, uh, I'm sorry. So, uh, I think you did better than you uh, expected, uh, by uh, because you used the lifeline. Yeah, I, I really started to doubt in the end with Malaga Madagascar and Tessel, and then with the three changes in between, so just to be sure, I thought I'd use the lifeline. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. All right, but let's see whether you can get a perfect yard again. India's Ganges River is one of the most polluted rivers in the entire world. A large section of the India's population considers the river to be a sacred river. They believe that the river will cleanse people of their sins. Millions of people bathe in the river perhaps with no regard or even knowledge of the fact that raw sewage is dumped into the Ganges from more than 1,100 industrial units. Nine rivers shown on maps, picture is shown where they are and I will tell you the length of the river. And then you have to tell me the corresponding river. So, the options you can choose from are the Missouri River, the Amur River, the Mississippi, the Yangtze, the Yellow River, the Nile, the Ob, the Amazon, and the Yenisei. So, in GeoGuessr, do you sometimes get spawned in a river or not? Uh, Sadly not. Apparently, Google cars can't really get there. And you need Google Boats uh, yeah. to update the uh, maps. Would be lovely. So you think uh, you know uh, something about this? 
I mean, I know some of the rivers, but I also really don't know some of them. You only need five of them. Yeah, you exactly. You need a perfect round. All so right. Uh, good luck. Thank you. First one. First one. It's 5,464 kilometers long. Mississippi. Then a river, 3,766 uh, kilometers. That's the Mississippi, and the previous one was the Missouri? 2,824 kilometers long. This is the Ope? 6,400 kilometers long. This is the Amazon? 3,767 kilometers long. This is the Yellow River? 3,700 kilometers long. This is the Amur? 6,300 kilometers long. This is the Yenisei. 3,487 kilometers long. This is the Yan this is the Yansei. 6,650. And this is the Nile. Stop the time. So you can once again check your answers yourself first. I'm gonna go with one lifeline again. One lifeline. Okay, then we fill that in, and then we can go to checking. So, first up, first up, it's a river almost 5,500 kilometers long. It's the Yellow River. We've only oh. seen a small part of the, the map. It's hard to see that it's the coast of China there. Then here we have indeed the Mississippi River. Then this is the Amur. And then we have the Amazon. Then almost 4,000 kilometers long is the Missouri River. Then we have the Ob River, followed by the Yangtze. Then is the Yenisei. And lastly, it's the Nile. Ooh. Oof. Sorry, you needed one lifetime more here. Yeah. It that's was difficult to see. It, what that's what I was debating. Yeah. But. Either way, you managed to get to this round with a perfect round, so that's something. So we thank you for participating. I, ho I hope you liked it. Yeah, I really liked it. Ah, that's good to hear. All right, and that was it for today. The answer to today's viewers question is four. Congratulations to all of you who got it right. And I hope to see you next time when you tune into a new episode of Smarter by the Second.